let's do a visual here on uh, one of the owner financing deals that we've done in the past uh, that actually just cashed out. So um, some of you may have seen this deal before, but never hurts to see it again because it is uh, it's a good deal. So um, this property was from an expired listing. Uh, we purchased it for $399 on a 48-month term. Seller out of state owner. This is like one of our favorite our favorite people to work with. This is one of the best people to work with, I should say. This guy was amazing. Great person. Um, property, vacant out of state owner. Um, family went through a tragedy, so they did not want to come back to this property. Uh, he flew in once to meet us, and then we structured the deal. Super flexible um, and just, just one of those great deals. Uh, we went ahead and sold it for four twenty nine. dollars uh, I'm going to show you the numbers. Um, know that these numbers are not, uh, they're actually higher. And I say that because we had a default with our first buyer, um, which would accumulate another about $40,000. The, the tenant, original tenant buyer that we had came with 40000 roughly $40,000 down, was a construction worker, had his own business, moved in with his girlfriend, and then him and his girlfriend broke up, and then they decided that they didn't want to own this property anymore. So he left 40K on the table, but he in himself was also very amicable and, and walked away knowing the way our agreements are set up. And that's how our, our typical buyer acts. They totally understand the process. Um, so let's see here. Payday one, uh, the next payday one, 80K up front, or 40K up front, 40K later. Uh, the second buyer, uh, he was a, I think he's a professor. Um, but also he uh, works with, for a side gig, works with a local brewery company and, and does uh, chemist work for him to help them develop new flavors. So, and he was uh, always early, Zach, if I remember, he was just your ideal buyer that, you know, it's awesome. Yeah. He ends up getting into the house with his girlfriend as well. And they end up getting engaged in this house and then get married, which is so great, great story. Um, so as you can see, we, we collected a large portion of our step up front. Uh, monthly payment on this is $1,200 plus taxes and insurance, but we pass it along to the buyer. Uh, so just to make this, uh, make it simple, that's why we're, we're showing you these numbers. Uh, so that's a $550 spread, 48 month term, $26,000. $26,400. As you can see, this is this $550 spread because the $200 is um, uh, taxes, uh, $1,000 principal only payments. All right, so looking at this breakdown, just so you see it, I'll repeat it again, just so everyone's clear. $1,000 principal only payment plus the uh, $200 in insurance. We can't pass it along, but we can pass the taxes. Um, buyer payment, $1,750 plus taxes. Monthly cash flow on this, $550 a month times a 48 month, $26,000. All right, so we increased the price premium by thirty thousand. Um, in hindsight, I think we absolutely could increase it higher. Yep. Um, but Nick did a great job. Was aggressive. We got it filled. We got it filled twice. Um, so I'm never going to complain about that. Principal pay down forty eight thousand dollars because it's a thousand dollar principal only payment. So when Chris and I are talking about the importance of 0% interest or principal only payments, this is why. It's a significant hedge against any market. And also it's a major wealth builder. All right, so we already collected a deposit of 80,000. So our, our, our payday three is negative two, which is really sad. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, so everything else really looks good. Um, we also, you can't see it, but on uh, the picture behind whoever took that picture would be a two-car garage with a um, suite above it, which we inherited the tenant from the original uh, seller because he was a good friend and he actually helped us a lot. Uh, so we had an approximate $5,000 and that's approximate and it's low. And it's probably closer to 75 to 10 grand if we looked at it over the course of the term. Zach, let me add something there briefly. So the, uh, we said earlier that you can incentivize a buyer to pay you on time and to increase their down payment and give them a carrot. We did the same thing here. And without getting into the dates and all that, we said to this owner, hey, we're collecting the rent. 
But after you get your deposit in and after you get to this point in the deal and nothing's been late, you collect the rent. It was a great big carrot farm. That's why that would have been a lot higher for us. But it was a win-win. Okay, 109. As promised, six-figure deal. Two buyers that we pivoted on. So we didn't include the, uh, the first non-refundable deposit. So if you added, it would have been another $40,000 minus a couple months worth of uh, monthly payment you had to make. But just to keep it simple, we, we ran through this, this scenario. Now, there must be questions now, guys. Yeah. All right. Alan, go ahead. Open up. Yes. Um, Chris, could you just go over that last little piece you, you were talking about for a moment? I didn't quite catch that yeah, whole sure. thing. With the, yeah, so the tenant was in the garage, above the garage, and we collected the rent. And so right. the reason that number five is so low is we said to the tenant buyer, we gave him a carrot, we gave him several. We said, A, you have to stay current every month. B, you have to get your, your next 40 in. I think he, they might have staggered 2020, however they did it. We wanted that to be in. In yep. other words, he proved himself. And once he proved himself, we said, we will then assign the lease, the, the tenant in the garage to you and you collect it. That was a big win for him. Um, I see. Right. I think the Razak, was it like five or 700? It was a good it's size. 750. Rent. Yeah. 750 a month. Yeah. So those are cool deals. We could have kept it the whole time and that would have been a little greedy. It's just a nice win-win and it keeps that person engaged, invested in the home. Great. So ultimately you were looking for 20% down over time from this buyer we look for as much as we can get right but but it, it, that guy wanted to do that like this guy's very conservative he wanted a lower mortgage this is not mm -hmm. a jumbo loan in that area so he didn't have to do that would we have accepted someone with 10 probably but nick's a master at negotiating that and that's what they came out of that meeting with he you know he maxes it out without stressing the buyers out um and that's a whole module for those of you that aren't familiar with that there's a whole module in the in the QLS program inside the academy, all on selling these things for the max value. Okay, great, thank you. You bet, good questions. Uh, let's see, uh, any other questions? Well, thank you for the hand clap. Uh, are you choosing traditionally are you closing traditionally with realtors and lenders or via deed exchange? All right, so in this particular deal, uh, we're, we're closing with a traditional lender. Uh, Nick has a very systematic process that he works with us and all of our, uh, and all of our associates and we get them with a lender uh, about six months out but they can always choose to close earlier if they choose to. But yeah, traditional lender. In this particular deal, we did not um, go ahead and sell it to them on owner financing or anything like that. Great question above that, Zach from Tisha. Um, what's the principal balance when they do go get that loan? This is a great question because we do not give them credit for that monthly lease payment of 1750. So the answer is it's 399 less 80. That's what they're going for a loan for. If you start giving them credit for that, in our opinion, you are going to take some incentive for them to go get their loan off the table, right? You're giving them probably more principal payment if you if you start to do that than the bank's going to for the first five years of their mortgage. So we don't we don't do it. What we do sometimes is we offer an equity enhancement program, and just to keep it very simple, we offer it up to five hundred dollars a month. The buyer can pay in extra; they get a full credit for their deposit. So yeah, I want to give you guys an extra five hundred dollars. Why would they put extra deposit money down when we don't need them to do that? The inequity enhancement program says if they do that, we'll lower the price 250. We match them 50%. So now you can do whatever percentage you want. You can match them one to one. You can allow them to put more down. We don't go over 500 because someone hits the lottery. We tell buyers this. You go out and hit the lottery or you inherit money and you want to put 30 grand down. I can't match it at 15 grand off the price, right? So we just say up to $500 a month, you can put extra in and we will take a 50% match of that and take it off of your price. No set thing. You can do whatever you want, but that's some things we do. We do it during the holidays. Uh, Sue and Nick do a, um, Sue works for us in the office for the properties. They'll do a blast on the holidays or 
you know, some, some other uh, promotion and they'll get one or two to kick in an extra thousand or $2. Okay. Well, that's good cash flow for you. you you're increasing your payday once. So just food for thought. Chris, I'm going to hit these two questions. I'm going to toss it back to you. Um, if the principal pay down was a thousand a month, why is the monthly payment 1200? Uh, in on that document or on those slides, we had that 1200, which is a thousand dollar principal payment plus the $200 in interest because we cannot pass on the interest. Insurance. So we were showing you exact, I'm sorry, the insurance. My bad. The insurance, because uh, we can't pass along that. We can pass along the taxes, though. That's why you'll see that difference there. Um, uh, last one. How'd you pick $1,000 for principal payment? I had a really in-depth conversation with the seller. I, <laughs> I'm not making a funny joke. I can see see this is about to happen so i had a really in-depth conversation with a seller and um they you know and he uh realized after i had the, you know, the conversation with him that his taxes were were really high for us to to us for us to make a a, a large payment i mean we weren't going to be able to find the buyer um uh, with a with with a large principal payment that we had to make there because the taxes on the house are like 750 bucks a month it's pretty it's extremely high so we went back and forth and he just said, hey, what about $1,000? And I said, let me just check my numbers. And I said, yeah, that'll work for us. Um, as you can see, we had a great spread because of Nick's technique and, and getting it sold. But it, it goes back to what we started the call with. It was all about finding out what was most important to the seller. What was most important to that seller was he wanted closure. He wanted it sold. He wanted a commitment. Um, and what was most important was the 48 months. He didn't want to go any longer. We offered him ton we offered him a lot more money for a longer time. Didn't want it. Him and his wife both agreed. So he was willing to sacrifice the monthly payment and the uh, purchase price. 